Oh my! <laughs> oh my! It's gonna be a smoking! <laughs> Greetings, greetings. Back to Nature, Organic Farms, Back to Nature Africa. Welcome back to our wonderful YouTube channel and another beautiful episode that we have opportunity to bring you today and getting a chance to dive into what we call the African Mind Series. Some of you might have seen uh, the episode we brought to you on the African Mind of Wadamaya or the African Mind of Miss Trudy. Well, today we have none other than the man. The myth, the legend, himself. And we'll get a chance to delve a little deeper into the African mind of Professor P. L. O. Lumumba. Just saying that name evokes power. It evokes confidence, a deep love of Africa, of Africans, of humanity. So, Professor, I'd like to say karibu sana to our Back to Nature Organic Farms here today on this beautiful day. How are you doing, sir? I'm very fine. I'm glad to be here this morning. I can't start this talk without saying, oh my, <laughs> oh my, <laughs> it's gonna be a smoking. <laughs> Best session here today. I want to say karibu. Thank you very much. Uh, let me say how glad I am to be present in this uh, farm. As I've uh, told you before, I have no doubt in my mind that if any society wants to claim civilization, the first thing that that society must do is to have the ability and the capacity to feed itself. And that is why, to me, the ability of African households feed themselves and feed them feed themselves in a manner that is sustainable is at the very heart of the development of African societies. Yes. You and me recognize that in the last few years there have been many attempts at dominating Africa in the agricultural sector. Absolutely. If you look at European companies and American companies such as Monsanto and Syngenta, they have been at the very heart of uh, propagating seeds which are not organic. And I think the realization is now dawning on many African countries that in order to sustain agriculture, yes. in order to ensure that you have food that is palatable for the African population, yes. in order to ensure that you create an environment that will allow your people to thrive, yes. you have to take charge of agriculture, Absolutely. that you enjoy sovereignty over your agriculture and do it in a manner that is sustainable. And one of the things that we must talk about, yes. if you eat healthy food, it means that the burden on the health sector is that much reduced. Absolutely. Life expectancy increases that much and the dependency on other support structures is also reduced. So I can't agree with you more that what you are doing here is at the very heart of the beginning of the regeneration of Africa in a manner that ought to be replicated not only in this neighborhood but to be replicated in the continent of Africa. You will have heard the recent statements of uh, the, the Director General of African Development Bank, Dr. Akinumi Adenshi. And Akinumi, with whom I agree, says that Africa is indeed the next frontier for sustainable agriculture. And that it is incumbent upon African government and African people yes. to now begin to invest in agriculture in a manner that embraces technology and also accommodates natural ways of agriculture. Wow. Could be said more beautifully. We had a wonderful climb up and you effortlessly with no 
problems whatsoever, were easily able to climb up nine meters high into the air without even losing a breath. Even when I climb up there, you know, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> start breathing hard. So you're someone who not just understands this intellectually, but it's something that you practice. It's something, that, and so I like to make. And this is now the behind, sort of the African mind of PLO Lumumba. If you don't mind sharing with us, Prof, some of the personal practices that you live by, that you engage, that allows you to be so dynamic, that allows you to have such control of your faculties, your intellect, your ability to speak, the energy that you bring. Well, let me just say, first of all, it's important to know that I'm a martial artist. Wow. Well, I've been a martial artist since 1975. Yeah. Ubuntu is meant to be an African art. We are going to fuse a lot of arts from different traditions, Kung Fu, Taekwondo, Aikido, and mixed martial arts. Yes. But the African spiritual uh, tradition is, is very important. And if you look at African martial arts, it was resident in many communities. And I think that that is critical for the mind. And, and I urge people that in order to energize the mind, you've got to energize the body. Mm. So that people must be in the business of engaging in physical exercise on a daily basis. Because that is critical. If you only energize your mind and you don't energize the body, then the mind collapses sooner rather than later. Wow. But it's also important to know that how we were brought up. I was brought up partly here in Nairobi and partly in my rural home. Yes. So I'm a child of two worlds in many ways. You see? And, and I'm close to nature in that regard. In my own rudimentary way, I engage in agriculture. But now that I've had the opportunity of serving what you are doing, I'm thoroughly educated. And I'll be inviting you to come and uh, iron some of the creases that are standing in our way so that we can realize better productivity. But self-discipline, mm. in my view, is that the heart of human development. The ability to organize oneself, the ability to ensure that your life is lived on the basis of a program without being robotic is very critical, particularly for the younger generation. In a, a sense, what you're talking about is a holistic approach. And for Africa and Africans to regain their dignity and humanity on the world stage of civilization, we must not just be interested in maybe financial uh, in terms of success or just be interested in political uh, you know, uh, accumulation of power or just be interested, but we must look at all areas of a holistic human approach. Is, is that what I'm, I'm you know, getting from you? When, when you say what you're saying, as, as a young student in 1979, I read a book which is a book by the great Greek uh, playwright, Sophocles, Oedipus Complex. Mm. I always remember the last component of that book when uh, the lead character, Oedipus, is being sent out of his mother and the, the people who watch him say behold this was Oedipus the greatest of all men then learn that mortal man must always look to his ending a man could be called happy until the day that he dies or carries his heart in the grave and and to me that defines how we should be that Success is a verdict of history. Mm. What we ought to do when we are engaged in activity is to play our part to the best of our ability. Yes. It is those who live after you who will be able on a way in scale to determine that behold, they are lived a great man or a great woman. 
and ours is to do our very best and to ensure that during that period you also empower others. There is this idea that we hear quite often people calling themselves leaders. I believe that one is a leader when they have empowered others. Hence the saying, there is no greater recompense for a teacher than to produce people who surpass him or her. And that should define whatever activity we engage in. You are engaged in agriculture here. Your greatest pride is not to make this an oasis of success. This should be replicated so that out of this oasis, you build an ocean, which will be an ocean of success. And I think that that is when you will count yourself, if you are in the business of counting, success. Uh, but that should not be our aim. Our aim is to make your contribution. And I want to conclude with an interview that I listened to once again as a young student in 1985 when I watched Mahatma Gandhi's story as told by Richard Attenborough. And he was being interviewed while he was in prison by a lady called Margaret Duggaride. And he said that throughout the ages, man must always endeavor to make a contribution that changes the quality of the lives of others. Mm. And that that can only be achieved when we live in harmony with nature. And that it is incumbent upon all men to ensure that they eat 80% of what they produce. Mm. Because it is only when you are in control of what you eat that you can say you are truly independent. And that when you fall sick, you must also be in control of what you consume as medication. Absolutely. And I think in Africa, we kind of lost that. We are now beginning to regain that. We are in a phase of self-realization. What you earlier described as the Renaissance. And that Renaissance is what is going to redefine Africa. That is what is going to give agriculture pride of place and once agriculture has been given its pride of place we can genuinely claim that agriculture is the backbone of our economies and if it is the backbone and we can feed ourselves then we can be able to sit at the dinner table of human civilization and say that we are civilized otherwise if you import your rice from Pakistan and you import your sugar from Brazil claim to be civilized, then I have a problem, then I struggle, but I don't want to struggle, I don't want to appreciate that. Wow, 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 what mighty, what deep philosophical, what practical, what a, a wealth of wisdom you had a chance to share with us here today, a peek into the African mind of PLO Lumumba. Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. And, with, and having a chance for you to, in a sense, share. By the way, we got, we didn't want to close this out, by the way, without getting some great quotes from you. You know, he's known for all these <laughs> wonderful quotes. So he pulled uh, uh, the, uh, one of these uh, great Greek philosophers. Uh, that's no problem, and we, we're very thankful that he shared it with us here today. But you talked about measuring the worth of a man or a woman and the contribution that he or she leaves. And I want to say to you, Professor Pielo Lumumba, if you were, and I, we wish you long, long life, but if today was the last day on earth for you, we would say the contribution that you have contributed to humanity and particularly to the part of humanity called Africa and African people has been tremendous. Probably cannot even be measured. We appreciate you really having a chance to bring forth and revive the visions of the great Nkrumah and other Pan-African leaders. I remember when you came on the scene, very strong, with that letter to Lumumba, message 
I mean, a letter to Nkrumah, uh, and getting a chance to say, we have not forgotten that Pan-African vision. So that contribution that you have made, uh, it is a, a tremendous contribution. And those of us, as you had finished your closing statement there, we appreciate, we appreciate your presence here today on this farm. We appreciate your insights and we appreciate what you have poured into humanity in the form of helping to restore, to revive, to rejuvenate a part of humanity called Africa and Africa. And you're great. Uh, Pan-African in that regards. So Asante Sana for being able to join us here today. We want to say thank you. Shout out to Amos in the background there who helps to run and put together some of the opera operations for the foundation on that regards. But the, what he's doing the foundation around the African continent is just awesome. So make sure follow everything and not only subscribe and stuff but don't hesitate. Amos can they donate to the PLO Foundation? Yes, of course. Of course, right? So, you know, foundations always need financial support. Don't hesitate uh, putting some of your hard-earned money because the funds that you give an African mind, like Professor PLO's Lumumas, will be compounded in terms of the impact and the significance it will make uh, on the world and particularly in this part of the world. So uh, thank you very much for uh, sharing us with this episode today. Don't forget, Back to Nature Organic Family, subscribe, share, comment, like this particular video and with that we'll see you at our next episode of African Mind Series. Oh my! Oh my! It was smoking! <laughs>